Hi everyone, in this video I want to share about base design tips for new players in which helping to keep your base safe from white fire in summer and also making your survival needs easier to get. Also make sure to stay until the end of the video as I will give two additional tips and have a giveaway event for five winners. While it's not wrong to build base as how we want, it can be risky in summer if we don't have enough ice flingomatic to protect our base from wildfire. Especially if your world doesn't generate many clockwork creatures that drop gears for ice flingomatic, and you are not used yet to go into the ruins to get gears. Or the structures in your base are too widespread that ice flingomatic cannot cover them all. While we can go to cave to avoid wildfire in summer, or come back to base in the dark or night time where wildfire will not happen, why not make a base that will let us chill even in the heat of summer and let us do what we want? So how is this base design helpful? Let's get on each part. In the middle of the base is an ice flingomatic and we build our base within its protection radius. On the right side here, we have alchemy engine lined up with chests that will help us crafting new recipes faster. Example, if I want to craft an umbrella, I simply open the chest that contains silk beside the alchemy engine. So I can save time compared to placing bunch of chests in one separate location, then have to go back and forth taking the required items for crafting. Also, we can walk through a chest as if it is invincible. So we can place as many chests as we want Without worrying, it will block our way. We can craft new things without taking the ingredients out from the chest beside the alchemy engine up to the fourth chest. Then we have our kitchen and a little garden here. Four crock pots, some ice boxes, and a bird cage near them so we can quickly take out extra meats from the ice box to turn them into eggs. Here we have a farm plot to grow 9 fish tables so we can always get fish tables for our pierogi. Also can be very useful in our first winter as emergency food source. Pumpkin, potato, and tomato are fish tables that provide good amount of hunger and HP. Also there are 9 berry bushes for regular source of berries and occasional drumsticks. The bait for gobbler is placed in a small space here beside the pen for future grass gecko. Whenever we dig up grass stuff and replant it, after around 25 days, it has 1% chance to spawn several grass gecko. Grass gecko is an automatic cut grass producer, but they can run anywhere around your base if they are not caged. That's why we build a pen around the grass and twigs farm to prevent them from running around after they spawn. On the left side, we have 6 big houses and a small bait cage to keep them outside in ducks and night time. Not only we can get meats and pig skin every full moon from these warrior pigs, they are also useful for defending against hounds. And help to chop trees. And sometimes spawning tree guards, which is a good base defender for bosses like beer clubs and beer girl. Beside the pit houses are several drying racks to turn meat into jerky. Jerky is a good food source that can last for 20 days and in the beginning of the game, you can make 2 to 3 drying racks to help restore sanity and HP, especially in long winter nights. On the upper side of the base is where we put our additional structures such as salt lake and think tank, then furnace, tent and siesta lintu, and the meat effigy. Notice that the shadow manipulator is built in line with some chests, so we can put our shadow related items nearby the shadow manipulator. Essentially saving time because as time goes, we will have so many items that it could take time to look for a certain item if we don't put things in certain place that is easy to remember. One trick is to vary your chest skins for different items. Like this hard pattern chest for seasonal equipment such as umbrella pull aside team chest to store my ruins items, terraria team chest to store loot from bosses, this white gold chest for gems, plain chest for crafting materials, and so on. Maybe you are thinking, okay it looks good and functional, but where to begin? Which one should I build first? Here I will play as Wilson to show step by step on how to build the base as I survive until summer. After exploring the map until day 11, 
I made a base near the florid postern because there are two wormholes nearby to help me go around faster. This base is centered around the ice plingometic, so we need to know how far the ice plingometic can cover. It is about 7 by 7 turfs in circular size. We craft a pitchfork to help us measure how far our trusty plingometic can cover. Then dig out a dumbbell shape like this. I place alchemy engine here and then place a chest to store basic crafting materials such as logs, gold nuggets, rocks, and silk. On crop pot placement, I recommend to use geometric placement mode to help you place everything neatly. After place the first crop pot, place the second crop pot on the fourth dot after the first crop pot. Repeat for the third and the fourth crop pot. Remember to place crop pot first before ice box because crop pot needs a bigger area before it can be placed down. I was lucky to found gears when digging up the graves, so I was able to make one ice box and place it between the crop pots. Next, I catch butterflies and some bees and go to other side of the river to place two bee boxes. The honey gathered in bee box will not spoil and can be taken anytime, especially in winter for additional food source and can be used for good crop pot recipes. Also, I prefer having the bee box separated by a river to help prevent them approaching my base, especially in spring where the bees become aggressive. On day 14, after building bird cage and set up bird trap, I team up with two pig men from the two pig houses I built to chop down some trees, in which not only it helped me to get the logs I needed for future crafting, but also helping to spawn tree guards faster. Back to base, I built another two pig houses and craft garden riga magic from the logs I got, then set up a farm plot beside the berry bushes. By now, I have 9 berry bushes, a farm plot that can give me at least 9 fish tables, 4 pig houses and 2 bee boxes. Pretty good so far. While exploring the map, I found another wormhole that led to the desert, and realized my base is surrounded by 4 wormholes. Nice. On day 19, I built the bait cage to keep the pigs outside and set up two drying racks to make jerky. Then I built another two drying racks and set up a tent to help restore my health and sanity during long winter months. These are the foods that I have on the first day of winter. Not bad. I want to defeat dragonfly to get furnace on my base, but I need to find pan flute first. So I tame a beefalo to help me roam around faster. Well, not on the first 3 days because beefalo is in heat in the first 3 days of winter, and the riding time becomes significantly shorter. Sorry, Chester! After roaming around for a few days, I finally found the pan flute and it happens that the deciduous biome is beside the magtax biome. Winter is a season full of joy as I run together with magtax and his family. Played hide and seek with the rock and with the rook. By day 30, I went back to base with bags full of goodies and 5 jerkies hanging ready for me to get. Right on time as I go to nearby forest and wait for deer clops and show her my friendly neighbor spiders and the tree man. Then I play the game of who face plant on the snow first and deer clops won. She's good at it. I went back home happy and oh, it's full moon. The pig men become war pigs, but remain chasing the pig skin in the bed cage, so I can safely defeat them one by one. By day 32, I have so many meats in my ice box and sleep happily throughout the night. In the first day of spring, I fought dragonfly and then go back home to set up the furnace and the bait cage for gobbler as the berry bush will grow after winter ends.
Throughout the season, I continue to explore the map and plant the grass tufts and saplings on bottom part of the base and cover them with stone walls. Here is how it looks as of day 47. The basic resources I need such as grass, twigs, meats, and fish tables are within my reach and safe from the threat of wildfire, as they are all within the ice polygomatic radius. After all the crazy moments in spring, I built another cage to keep the future grass gecko contained. By day 63, I placed Siesta Lean 2, Shadow Manipulator and Mid Effigy, also another ice box to store the seeds of certain plants that I want and chest for farming tools. Lastly, I covered the base with carpet earth, giving the base a beautiful look and hey, the grass gecko spawn on day 65. Here is the final look of the beginner base. I added a pit house inside the gecko farm to keep the geckos dropping the grass as they will be scared when they see the pit man. Even though the pit house is outside the phlegomatic range, the pit house will still be protected from wildfire as the grasses nearby the pit house will help to alert the phlegomatic when it catch fire. Same with the mid effigy and the compost bin, protected from wildfire even though it's not fully within the phlegomatic range. For endothermic fire pit, we place it outside the phlegomatic range, so it will not be extinguished, and it is immune to wildfire, so we can still have source of light in the hot summer night. Here are two additional tips. Number one, if you are in short of gears, go to Dragonfly Desert and pick the tumbleweeds. It has 1% chance to drop gears, or dig the graves, as it has 3% chance to drop gears. Tips number 2. Lure plant that we found in spring is a useful plant that can give us leafy bit every 2 days. We can cook 2 leafy meats and 2 honey to get jelly salad that restore 50 sanity and 37.5 hunger. It is one of the best sanity food in the game and easiest to get as well. Lure plant will spawn on place that players have visited along the way in spring. We want to keep this plant nearby us, but the thing is, it has the highest priority that wildfire algorithm will target. Means if you have this in your base, it will always be the first thing that will burn. We can use this as our advantage to ensure any potential wildfire is contained within our ice phlegomatic range. The only problem is, Lure plant will spawn up to 27 eye plants around it that will attack or eat any item left on the ground. Item that is eaten by eye plant will be destroyed after 20 seconds. So it can be problematic, but we can deal with it. The easiest way is to plant the lure plant on a boat on the river. The lure plant will not spawn any eye plant when planted on boat. However, if we don't have enough ice polygomatic to cover the boat, that boat will surely burn and drown in summer as wildfire will always target the lure plant on that boat first. So if you only have enough gears to make one ice polygomatic by the time summer comes, plant the lure plant in the middle part of your base and cover your base with any of these turfs. These turfs will prevent lure plants annoying eye plants to spawn while still giving you the leafy meat every two days. Cover about two turfs away around your base. I hope you find this base guide helpful and as promised, I have giveaway for 5 people to celebrate my 1000 subscribers. What's the price? The good news is you can choose what you want in the game shop. After I announce the winners in my next video, I will reply on your comment in this video and you can tell me which one you want. Then I will purchase it and send it into your Steam account. But make sure the item you chose is giftable. As you can see, not all items in the shop can be given to a friend.
Thanks so much for watching and following my channel from beginning. I hope my videos can help your survival in Don't Starve Together easier and more enjoyable. Please help to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and sharing this video will help my channel grow. Thank you as always and take care.